What was the moment at which you first heard an animal thinking? Actually, all my life. I think it is something I've been born with. Good morning, Dirty Boy. Just the ability to talk to animals, to communicate with animals, is magic. <laughs> it's like the most purest form of magic. The animals always came first in Roy's life. <laughs> I remember the black jaguar who lived in Roy's bedroom. Cab visit. Roy sleeps with the animals. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Roy's there when they are born. The first voice to hear is mine. The first face they see is mine. So, most probably they think I am a tiger. I'm sort of the father figure. I guide them to their childhood, I let them know what's right and what's wrong or where they're comfortable. They're looking for me as sort of a security blanket. The morning when Roy goes and takes a shower, they know he is coming any minute. How many animals are we talking about? We have all together 50. 50. And there are elephants, pythons? Yeah, tigers, leopards, Oops. panthers. And today, we are fortunate enough that we have 32 white tigers, five snow white ones. But they are the last ones. They're extinct today in the wild. Give me a nice smile. Give me a nice smile. Roy has always had an amazing bond with animals. But in particular, he was fascinated by white tigers. He thought they were magical somehow. In 1982, they meet the Maharaja of Baroda, who is the Commissioner of Wildlife in India. He comes to see their show in Las Vegas, and Roy sees this as just almost divine. White tigers were rare, kind of a fluke in nature. All white tigers in captivity today are descended from one animal that was caught as a cub named Mohan that began the white tiger line. And it turns out the Maharaja's family had actually had success in breeding white tigers. They had given two to the Cincinnati Zoo. There was nothing in me that wanted to sell an entertainer tigers. But I was pretty impressed at Roy's commitment, his dedication, and certainly the care he could provide. I mean, when he talked about bringing in white tigers, he talked about building an Olympic-sized swimming pool for the cats, air-conditioned quarters. So I took a gamble and I sold them a pair of tigers. Two of these tigers wind up mating, and Sitara, female tiger, gives birth to three white cubs. And as you might imagine, Roy is just over the moon. Those cute little tigers can trace their lineage back to Mohan, who was bred with his daughter, inbreeding that would later be controversial. Roy had this almost magical contact with them. He adored them. They seemed to adore him. Wow, and the future has already begun. He started to bring him on stage when they have three weeks old, and the animal, they felt comfortable and secure when Roy was there. <laughs> and the names are Pride and Joy. All of these animals are show business babies. They're trained not to be afraid of the stage. The lights, the sound, the people. It doesn't phase any of these animals. That takes a lot of training. You're the guy that gives me all the treats. You're the guy when I want to play with that special toy, you bring that toy. If you are my guy all the time, I've learned that every time I do what you ask, I get this fun, amazing life. Part of the illusion for Siegfried and Roy is that they were magically controlling these wild, ferocious animals. 
But the reality is, Hello. <laughs> there were trainers and handlers behind the scenes all the time. Roy did have a small leash on the bigger cats. Typically speaking, every cat on stage would either have a handler or maybe even be secretly locked down somewhere. So what's common in the industry is they would have like a little light wire that you wouldn't be able to see from stage and they would just be anchored to the floor. Let's not forget, these are still wild animals with an instinct to kill. In all the years that Siegfried and Roy worked with these animals that are basically dangerous, there were never any major incidents. There were minor incidents. You had a chunk of your arm taken out by a lion, Yes, right? it was not a chunk, it was just a, 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 a 33 nip. stitches? It was a nip, yes. Well, we had at this time a, a, an illusion what Roy changed into a lion and I opened up the cage and to make it look very ferocious, so I had a little uh, wrestling uh, with the lion. And he went too far with, with going with playing. I just got too carried away. Not one of them has ever really turned on you. No, I guess I'm very fortunate to have a good family. Roy, he knows that people get attacked by their tigers all the time, but he thinks I'm good enough, I'm aware enough, I've done enough, I'm not going to be that person today. Does he know his name? Yeah. His name is Akbar Kabul. Do you know how far you can push him? Yeah. So you would let him lick your face? Mm-hmm. You would pull his ears? Yeah, you don't believe it, right? You don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Drink any Yeah. Oh. Mm. See? Yeah. That's a good boy. Yeah. When he does, that means he says hello. Everything is fine. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's like with everything with animals. You can take nothing for granted. Even if you think you know it all, it's a physical risk. It feels wonderful. I cannot even tell you the feeling what it is when a full-grown tiger licks your face. But you also have to think at the same time. With one swap of his paw, he can decapitate you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.